bridging we're talking about here. Here we go. And predominantly regulation of bridging finance because it's very, very unique. So I want to just cover this off with you quite quickly. Now, bridging finance, um, you may be aware, you may not be aware, is something that somebody would take out temporarily to be able to buy a property that um, they haven't sold their original property. So typically somebody's buying a place, they're trying to sell a place at the same time, they can't sell it, but they want to buy the house, so they take out bridging finance. And it's, it's, a, it's a temporary a lending situation. So typically what happens, is you have a house that you, you've got that you, you've got for sale. So let's put this up, you know, for sale. And uh, you're trying to sell that property and you found um, a mansion that you want to buy. There you go, there's a mansion there for you. Da -da -da. You found this mansion that you want to purchase, but you can't buy that until you've sold this place. So what happens is you, 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 you come along and, and um, the bridging lender will lend you some money. There you go. So you can buy that house without selling that one. That's known as bridging finance. You can have open bridging and closed bridging. Open bridging is where there's no sign at all this house is ever going to be sold. Closed bridging is where you've, you exchange on that property typically and you've got a period of time where you're going to get uh, completion. You, you, you know your dates. And what bridging finance providers do is they don't really worry too much about how much money you're earning. They're not going to sort of check you out to see what your affordability is. They're more worried about the um, the exit strategy, as they call it. They'll make they'll, they'll charge you a lot of money. Of course, they will for the purpose and lots of interest. But they're worried about the exit strategy. In other words, they'll lend you the money you need to buy the properties, but they want to make sure that that money is going to be repaid fairly quickly with the proceeds of selling the house and maybe getting a proper mortgage on that one as well. So that's how bridging finance providers work. Now they do secure their, 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 their financing, of course they do. They'll take charges out on the property. It may well be that you've already got a mortgage on the first house, more than likely. So what they'll probably do then is they'll take maybe a second charge on that one and they might do a first charge on that one, a sort of temporary charge, just to secure the monies. Because they, they're not going to end their money without securing it, oh, they're daft. But what they'll then want, of course, is that when this house is sold, and maybe you've taken out a proper mortgage on this one, you know, just put the mortgage in there for you. They say proper mortgage, first charge mortgage. Then the money you've made, you basically repay it, and that's called the exit strategy. So that's how bridging works. Now, how is it regulated then? That's the key question to ask here as well, because up until uh, 2016, before the MCD, the Mortgage Credit Directive came in, bridging finance like second charge lending was completely unregulated. And it was a, bit, a little bit wild west, I suppose, to a certain degree. Um, they then talked about regulating it and they got a little bit um and ah about it. So they decided to give them some their own special rules. Now, the best uh, analogy really is the, the buy-to-let market where you have consumer buy-to-lets and business buy-to-lets. The FCA said that anybody who is buying a property to rent whereby they didn't really want to do it, it was, it was a sort of a, a temporary thing, they've inherited a property maybe, they call those consumer buy-to-lets because the person is a consumer and requires all the protection they can have. Therefore, they regulate consumer buy-to-lets. Business buy-to-lets, they don't regulate at all because it's a business person. It's a business transaction. They don't need, if you like, the FCA, MCOB sort of protection. And that concept they've used for bridging. So here's the rule. And uh, we'll put this down here on, in, in, in red pen down here. The basic rule is that a, a, a bridging finance will be um, MCD exempt, they call it. Yeah, MCD exempt. You may have seen that phrase being used. Now, if it's MCD exempt, it means it's not regulated. It's a bit obvious, really, isn't it? That's the Mortgage Credit Directive, by the way, 2060. It's not regulated. Now, that is predominantly for bridging finance that is for less than 12 months. In other words, they want it repaid within a 12-month period and it's for more than 25 grand, which is absolutely you know, not a problem, the, the, the minimum figure there. And that makes it MCD exempt. And it also needs to be second charge, less than four payments involved. The so second charge is there, less than four payments, but that's a small point really. Um, and any sniff of business purposes, of course, 
if this is for business purposes, any sniff of that, and it's completely unregulated because that's commercial. So the one to remember if you're doing an exam is less than 12 months is MCD exempt. If, however, the bridging finance is for more than 12 months, then it is regulated under um, MCOPS, and uh, you have to have things like ESIS provided as well, affordability needs to be assessed, etc. So as you can probably appreciate the vast majority of providers of bridging finance only get involved in MCD exempt stuff because they don't want to get uh, faffing around with, uh, with with affordability calculations, do they? They Because these people generally can't afford the mortgage because there's no payments on this bridging finance. It's all paid for by the exit, lump sums. So they don't, they don't want to get involved in that. So you often see many of these providers, specialist providers, only deal in MCD exempt bridging finance. Which is, not, which is not regulated. The companies might well be FCA regulated. That's, that's up to them what they do. And many brokers, of course, will only deal with them if they are. But the product itself is MCD exempt. Well, fair enough, I suppose you could argue it's probably a better good thing. It's quite a specialist area. I know a few brokers that get involved in this area, but it's quite a specialist. Um, but, but good business, particularly at the moment with this stamp duty going on. People want to buy property before the end of March 2021. They want to buy it, you know, complete. It may well be you're still trying to sell your existing house and you might want to buy this one to get to get off your stamp duty. I can see, you know, bridging finance being required and quite popular uh, in the early, early doors 2021. But we'll see how things pan out. So nice little overview for you on bridging and regulation. Hope that's been useful. See you soon.